So there's this relatively unknown but massive Japanese audio company, Foster Electric. They've been around forever and they make all sorts of OEM audio equipment for cars, phones, Bluetooth speakers, etc. And they have a little sub-brand called Fostex that makes high-end products intended for the prosumer hi-fi market. And they're actually really highly regarded among audiophiles. The thing is, their high-end headphones are outrageously expensive due to the, one could argue, unnecessary artistry that goes into making them. They even go to the own lengths of making their own paints in-house. But they make one headphone that's hugely popular in the DIY community, the T50RP. These headphones are $135. And at first listen, they honestly don't seem all that special. Their build quality is a little lackluster. They're almost fatiguingly bright and harsh on the high end with very little bass. I don't like them at all, and a lot of people don't either. But this same headphone is hugely popular in the DIY community because you can get them to sound really nice. In fact, there are even a few companies that sell commercially modified Fostex T50 RP. One of those companies was Mr. Speakers. Now, Mr. Speakers has gone completely in-house and they are currently known for making some of the most highly regarded and most expensive headphones in the world. But they started their company selling the AlphaDoc, which was a 3D printed, highly modified Fostex T50 RP. Yep, a $135 headphone that they sold for $599 and it took the hi-fi world by storm, raking in critical acclaim. Years later, as a thank you to the community that gave them their start, Mr. Speakers released all of the files and instructions needed to make your own alpha headphones for free. And today we're going to build them to see if we can make the best sub $200 headphones money can buy. This video is sponsored by Privacy. Generate card numbers online to make safe and easy payments no matter where you shop. You can't really make 3D printed headphones without a 3D printer. I used my Prusa i3 Mark III to print the ear cups, the baffles, and the pad rings in PETG plastic with a 20% infill. If you don't have a 3D printer, there are a variety of websites where you can upload the files and have a local maker create them for you. Or you may consider visiting your local public library or university because many institutions like this now have 3D printers available for free use. My printer did an excellent job and I think the finished prints look really nice, but I wanted a slightly less, I don't know, 3D printery look to them. Now the Mr. Speakers Alpha Dog have this gorgeous red apple paint to them with a beautiful clear coat, but achieving this look requires a ton of delicate sanding and a really high-end paint gun. I have neither the equipment nor the patience, and so we decided to sand down the outside of the cups, first with 400 grit and then 800 grit sanding blocks to get a good enough for Snazzy Labs finish. It was then that we painted the outside of the cups with a rugged black metallic paint intended for outdoor use. I think the end result is really nice. The cups have a nice sparkle to them and they feel excellent with a grippy exterior and really hide our sanding imperfections super well. Sure, I mean, compared to the Mr. Speakers, they look like garbage, but I think they're a lot better than just a 3D printed exterior. With that out of the way, it's time to disassemble the original Fostex T50 RP. Now, if you can find these used on eBay or Amazon for less money, I'd get them because we're ditching the enclosure after all. In fact, the only thing we're keeping are the drivers themselves, the headband and the ear pads. So we need to pull the ear pads off first and you'll see that we reveal there are seven screws on the original speaker baffle, four on the outside and three on the inside, which hold the driver in place. So we need to take out just the four exterior perimeter screws so that we can detach the baffle from the ear cup. But careful, the driver is very delicate and it is soldered into place with pretty short leads. So we need to A, very carefully detach the two pieces and then B, desolder the drivers. Luckily, this is very easy. All you need to do is take a soldering iron, heat the pad up and then pull the cable out. So I should mention, this is important. The drivers have to read an impedance in between 45 and 55 ohms by the time we put these back together. If you heat the pads up for too long during desoldering or resoldering, you'll ruin the traces and you can push the impedance up to above over 55 ohms, which ruins your driver and makes it sound really crappy. So you've probably only got about five to seven seconds total of solder time but that's longer than you think. So as long as you're not horrible at soldering, you'll be just fine. Maybe practice a little before you go into it. Now with the driver removed, we need to ditch the old ear cups. 
There's a single screw in the middle that holds the ball joint in to allow for cup actuation. So remove it, but don't lose this screw or rubber bumper. We're going to need them later to reassemble everything. Okay, remember those other two 3D printed parts we made? I guess we made two sets of two. Well, we've got to stick them together and create an airtight seal because that's where our driver will mount on one side and where the leather ear cup will attach on the other side. Now you can use super glue, but that sucks when you're trying to stick plastic together. So we can just use plastic welding. And yeah, it is kind of what it sounds like. Certain chemicals will melt certain plastics, creating an incredibly strong fusion and perfect fusion together. If you print it in ABS, you can use acetone. If you print it in PLA or PETG like I did, you're going to need methylene chloride, which is commonly found in paint stripper. Now, the thing is, we're dummies. and <laughs> We bought paint stripper without methylene chloride, but whatever substitute they used still worked because our plastic pieces welded perfectly together. So great. Once that's done, it's time to screw the drivers into the new baffles. The Mr. Speaker's Alpha Prime use high rose connectors to attach and detach the cable. Now, these connectors are kind of expensive, but I think they're totally worth it. They look beautiful, they are more compact than Mini XLR, and they're very easy to solder to. Now, the build calls for 28 AWG cable to connect the high rose connectors to the drivers, but we didn't have any laying around, so we used, and audio files are totally gonna flip out, but this worked super fine, an Ethernet cable. So we cut one open, we stripped it of its nice, thin, insulated wire, we tinned the cable first with solder, and then we heated up the post and slid the cable right in. Easy peasy. We're getting really pretty close. First off, we need to treat our new ear cups with sound dampening material. Now, there's a handy template that someone made online that we'll link to below that makes cutting this stuff a lot easier. Now, the build calls for three millimeters of dampening mat, but we already had five millimeter foam, so we kind of just used what we had, and then we very crudely thinned it out with a razor. This is a very non-ideal situation, but we're snazzy labs, so we did it anyway. Then we need to mount our female high rose connector and get a perfect seal around it. So we get a caulking gun and squirt some silicone around the inside of the connector hole, and then we firmly push the high rose connector into place. With that done, we reconnect the cups back to the headband with the screw we saved, and now it's time to solder the leads to our drivers and seal this thing back up. Again, these drivers are really delicate, and so you need to be careful to avoid putting any tension or pressure on the pads, which are very lightly mounted to that ribbon cable diaphragm. Now, the reason these headphones are cool is because the drivers are planar magnetic. Most cheaper headphones use dynamic drivers. I explain how dynamic drivers work in a really, really old video I did, which you should also check out. But planar drivers suspend a diaphragm, which is basically a really, really thin sheet of electrically charged plastic, in between two isolinear permanent magnets. Simply put, the diaphragm is suspended perfectly between the two magnets, which are actively trying to push each other apart. When current is applied to the diaphragm, it moves toward and away from the magnets, pressurizing the air, and thereby creating sound waves. This driver technology is said to provide higher sound quality because unlike a standard dynamic driver or speaker cone, uh, in a planar magnetic headphone, the whole driver flexes evenly and it does so more sensitively due to its super thin size. But it's also a lot more expensive to manufacture, which is why it's so rare to see in such a cheap headphone. Anyways, with the drivers wired up to the high rose connectors, it's time to pack these babies up with some cotton to further help sound dampening, and then we're going to basically just seal everything up with silicone. I very crudely applied silicone to the ear cup, used the four remaining screws to apply an even mounting force and make sure alignment was right, and then I put a sandbag on top to maintain an airtight seal until the silicone dried. And that's it. I wired up a super high quality high rose cable that I had laying around, although you could buy a relatively inexpensive one or just make your own. And oh baby, they sound incredible. They actually remind me of a closed back version of the famous Sennheiser HD 650. The shrill high end on the stock Fostex is completely gone, sounding much smoother with a huge emphasis on the mids and sub bass areas. The bass on these headphones was almost overwhelming, so I actually bored some holes into the back of the headphone to let a little more air in to reduce some of the bass, slightly. Although you could also plug these holes up if you felt like you didn't have enough bass, which is kind of handy. The soundstage is great for a closed back can, 
And while they really excel plugged into a desktop amplifier, they sound fine powered off a laptop or a phone headphone jack as well. All in all, I think these headphones look great. They sound fantastic. And even though the design is now more than five years old, I still think these sub $200 headphones sound as good as many headphones that are twice the price. It's a super fun project. It's not too tricky. And it's a great way to get a hi-fi sound experience on the cheap. Do you know what isn't cheap though? Your time. And that's why privacy is giving you $5 free if you watch this ad. Fraudulent credit card charges suck. You don't use the same password everywhere. And so you definitely shouldn't use the same card number everywhere either. Privacy allows you to manage card charges on your terms. Using their web app, Chrome extension, or mobile apps, you can create a new card number and restrict how often, for how much, and even by whom the card number is charged. You can set any billing address, which makes ordering internationally a breeze. And since privacy makes money for merchants and not users, it's absolutely free. Stay safe online and get $5 free when you sign up with privacy using my link in the video description. Well, folks, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you didn't, that other button seems to work okay too. Get subscribed for more awesome tech videos like this one, most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.